It's June 2021. It's the Paris Blitz event of the Grand Chess Tour and Ali Reza Firouz just sits down with the white pieces opposite Levon Aronian. And what follows is the absolute destruction of Levon's kingside. So let's see what happened here. And if you love a daily chess video, hit that subscribe button, never miss one. So Firouzja goes in for a Tromposki here. He loves these offbeat Queen's Pawn openings and they're really tricky to play against at times if you don't know what you're doing. So we had these opening moves. After c5, Firouzja immediately took on f6, shattering the pawns, but black now has the bishop pair and dynamic play down the g-file potentially. The pawn now took on c5, we had e6 from Aronian, and now pawn to c4 from Firuzja. If you take here, then Firuzja is going to take here, and you're landing yourself with a bad pawn structure after these exchanges. So Levon didn't go in for this, he didn't take that pawn immediately, instead he took on c4. Now you are allowing white to take the queens off here if you want to do this, but actually it doesn't lead to much. Say you had a line like this, the king's going to sit nicely on e7, with the queens gone it's not a problem that you can't castle. So if Firuzja didn't do this, he wants to keep pieces on the board. So instead he played knight d2 here. We had knight d7 from Aronian, Firuzja develops the other knight, Levon picks up the pawn here, and Firuzja captures with the bishop, again keeping the queen on the board. Now this knight looks a bit passive on d2 here with the way Firuzja has played, it's not on c3, but he's kept pieces on the board and he's looking to keep attacking chances alive. So bishop to g7 was played, castles from both players, queen to c2, bishop to d7, and now pawn to a4, Firuzja starts a queenside clamp, and soon Aronian also plays his pawn out to a5. He first goes f5, opening his g7 bishop. Now after knight d4, he puts a pawn on a5. He could have already played rook to c8 there, but okay, this is blitz chess. And Firuz just not bothered if Aronian gave up this bishop, because he'd be very happy to pick up that bishop pair in the dark squared bishop. So pawn to b3 played, rook to c8, rook a to c1. Pawn to f4 now from Aronian. So he gets going with this kingside plan of undermining the dark squares and he's trying to get this d4 knight to look a bit shaky. So Firuzja protects it with the other knight, allowing Aronian to take here. And although the pawn structure has been compromised, it has opened up the f-file for Firuzja's rook. So queen f6 was played. Although it steps straight into the line of the rook, there's no good way to actually take advantage of that with the knight yet. And the queen is looking to come down here, get that white queen exchanged off. So knight e2 was now played, and it might look slightly strange to backpedal that knight, but what Firuzja wants to do is open the f-file for his rook, and to do that he needs to move this knight. So he wants to put that one there, then move this one somewhere else towards the king side, that's his attacking plan. So queen b2 looks to trade queens, Firuz just having none of it with queen d1, and now Aronian plays the most logical move in the world, just bringing a rook to the d-file, but actually white has advantage now with knight f to d4, opening up the rook and bringing pieces towards the danger zone around the black king side. So knight e4 was now played, looks logical to sit on this central square, and rook c2 was now played by Firuzja, kicking that queen to the a3 square, and now Firuzja sees that he can entice Aronian into a mistake potentially. So knight f4 was played. What's going on with this? You're walking straight into a fork, by that pawn you'll be losing a piece. And sure enough, Aronian plays that move, but it is a mistake because he opens up this deadly diagonal for the light squared bishop. So if you want to pause and see how Firuzja executed on this plan, then please do so. So he played bishop takes on f7, just ripping open the black king side. The king had to recapture, and now knight e6 check comes, opening up this rook here. So the king moved away. You could already play queen g4 here to bring that one into the game, but instead Firuzja takes here, and now Aronian doesn't recapture that piece, or else you could jump the knight in like this, taking advantage of the pin here, 
and white is doing really well. Instead, black takes here in the center like this, and Firuja now chops on c8, the bishop recaptures, and now he brings his queen in. So he's looking at this checking square on f7, it's very, very sensitive, and knight d6 is the move that was played to cover that square. But once again, it runs into tactics. So queen d5 check came, the king moved away, and now there were a couple of good moves for Firuja. He could have already jumped the knight in like this. Instead, he goes for the swashbuckling queen takes on d6. The queen is forced to recapture, or else your great material down, and then knight f7 check comes. After the king moves, you pick up that queen. So Firuja does an exchange up, but the bishop pair can be very tricky. This is blitz chess, anything can happen. So the bishop's attacks on c8, it moves to defend itself. Now we had pawn takes here. The bishop recaptured with check and the king ducked away. We had pawn to b6 because that was attacked. And now knight to c4, you don't mind if black takes here and gives up one of those bishops. And that's a theme now of this end game. Black wants to try and preserve that bishop pair at all costs. So king g7 was played, rook d1 hit the bishop, bishop c5, and now the knight took on b6, a nice little tactic from Firuzja, not forced, but what it means is that if the bishop takes here, he can play here and he's winning one of them back. And if, as we saw in the game, we have bishop takes on b3, well now Firuzja jumps that rook across, he hits the bishop on the b file, and after it moves away, now he can still keep his knight protected. So we've had a pair of pawns exchanged, it was an equal exchange here, and what Firuzja now wants to do is try and pick up the A pawn as well. So the knight moved away now, we had bishop to d2, preserving that dark squared bishop, knight e7, bishop c4, the rook attacks that bishop, and after it moved away, now knight to c6 came. So once again we have this exchange of pawns on the queen side, now we're just left with the king side pawns. So to convert this, Firuzja now just starts hassling the black pieces here as we'll see. He brings his pieces over towards the king side. One of the challenges for black here is that you have to be careful with your exposed king. So knight d6 was played, bishop to b6, rook to e6 now, setting up discoveries, bishop to c5, knight to e4 hits the bishop, it dropped back to f8 here, and now Firuzja gets the king side pawns going with pawn to h3. We had bishop b3 hitting the rook, rook b6, bishop d5 hits the knight, knight g3. Looking at this checking square here, bishop to c4, the knight hopped in, and after the king dropped back, white brought his own king up the board. So bishop to d3 was played, and now pawn to g4. Once again, Firuzja is happy to give that knight for the bishop, so bishop c5 was played, not going in for that. Rook c6 hit the bishop, bishop f2, and now Firuzja sets a final trap for Aronian, which once again he succumbs to. So he plays king to g2 here, putting his pieces on the same diagonal. What's going on? Well, bishop e4 check was played. The king snapped off this bishop on f2, and here Aronian actually resigned, because if he takes the rook, he's running into this knight fork, that's game over. If you want to see another amazing Firuzja Aronian game, click here. Thanks very much for watching and see you soon.